one question sure. using PVC yeah, versus, say, fiberglass or something. Most PVC is a little bit lossy at RF. It is. It's not terrible, but it is a little bit lossy. Um, uh, yeah, fiberglass might be a better choice. Uh, or I don't even know if ABS is better than, than PVC. Well, is- ABS of itself is a good plastic. However, you do need to be cautious with using ABS in its common form that you find at hardware stores, which is called drain waste vent pipe, the black stuff. Now, uh, I was cautioned about this, and I didn't believe it at first, but I eventually looked it up, and it's true. That black ABS pipe, ABS is not any color naturally. It's transparent. But uh, they they use graphite in the the drain waste vent pipe. And the reason they do that, it makes the ABS more resistant to sunlight, apparently putting carbon in the in the ABS pipe. So uh, I wouldn't use the black ABS that you buy it, uh, at the hardware store. A PV, the white or the gray, uh, the gray heavier duty PVC is a good choice. The loss is not terrible. Uh, it, it's it's modest. John, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> the variables uh, for the HF antenna uh, length, diameter, uh, uh, the other things. If you wanted to make one of these for twenty meters. Uh, what were you talking? What were you thinking about as far as diameter of that uh, that tube? I would I would probably for twenty meters use at least a piece of four inch PVC. It would need to be it would need to be pretty tall though, about fifteen feet. If you use a two inch tape, two inch space. However, there's no reason why you can't uh, use narrower spacing and narrower tape. Uh, you're going to you're going to give up some for efficiency. That's why I gave that little plug at the end for a rubber ducky. You're, you're going to drop some efficiency and some gain by uh, using narrower tape. But inefficient antennas are the name of ham radio. Very, very few hams have 100 percent efficient antennas. And and the increase in diameter for HF bands is strictly so you can get more tape on it. Well, so you can get more inductance. Uh, in the equation and more and more length on the tape mm-hmm. you know uh, you, you you look at the the formula for the uh, the inductance of a of a piece of for a helix and you'll see that the uh, the inductance increases as the square of the diameter so by going by 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 mo- i i uh i was able to get a a 10 foot piece of 4 inch pvc down to about uh, 16 megahertz using two inch tape, two inch spaced. Certainly, if you use two inch tape, one inch spaced, you'd get it all the way down into 20 meters. Okay, thank you. I think 20 is about the bottom. Eh, maybe yeah. to stretch, uh, uh, not uh, trying to go down to, to to 30 meters and 40 meters is is a bit is a bit of a much for this design. Now, uh, although there is a possibility of using a, a stinger at the top, you could add a stinger to the top of this antenna and use the uh, the tape as the as a loading coil in the antenna. So uh, I uh, I sent QST an article on a big loading coil made out of that cardboard tube you see sometimes at home builder stores for pouring concrete right. forms, one inch di- one foot diameter cardboard tubes that are four feet long you make a beautiful loading coil on that with copper tape and uh, i was able to make some great 40 meter uh, antennas with that that were quite short yeah i have a, I have a question just kevin lv zero poh how much power can one of these antennas handle well i did i did some uh, i did some uh, some general calculations square mill and so forth a piece of a piece of one inch wide copper tape is equivalent, basically equivalent to a piece of quarter inch copper tubing. How much power do you think an antenna made out of quarter inch copper tubing will handle? Lots of power. I have a reason, test- Yeah, I apologize. Uh, the only reason I asked that question is because uh, the only concern I have is the fact that you that, that, that copper tape is pretty darn thin, like two mil. Two or yeah, five mil, something like that. One point that one point five mil copper tape in one inch width is the rough equivalent to a piece of quarter inch copper tubing, 
And so I don't think you're going to have much problem. Tom, W4NUA. I have a slinky antenna. I mean, this reminds me of the old slinkies, you know. Came back yes, to oh, yeah, the famous slinky antenna. Disadvantage of those, of course, was they were made of steel, and steel is not very conductive. And as I pointed out, uh, as I pointed out for uh, all small antennas, where you're making it small compared to the wavelength, that re- that uh, that conductor resistance is pretty high because com- a small antenna has very low radiation resistance. The radiation resistance I didn't give you the formulas, but radiation resistance goes down as the square root of length. Or the square of the length of the, of the so if you make it half as long, it's got only one fourth as much radiation resistance. So you got to watch real carefully uh, as you make them shorter. And the slinky though will tune up, but its efficiency is not real high. I had often wished they made copper slinkies. <laughs> Maybe you should copper plate one of them. Yeah. I have a question: Would it would doubling up the uh, copper tape uh, improve the resistance ratio? Well, as as I said, yes, of course, doubling up the copper tape would would definitely improve the efficiency some. Um, it's, um, uh, however, most of the most of the action is taking place on the surface skin effect, and so the uh, it's not going to make a big deal of difference to make it thicker. One point three mils is thicker than the skin effect uh, at at the, at these frequencies. Maybe if you went down to the lower frequency, it might be worth doubling it up. And you might you might worry a little bit about how about that, ad- that adhesive on the tape? Wouldn't that interfere with doubling it up? No, capacitive coupling. See, it's like a capacitor. AC goes right through a capacitor. AC will go right through the 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 uh, adhesive on it. That's why you can patch these antennas. You can, if you cut it or break it by accident, just take a piece of this copper tape about four inches long and stick it over the break, and it's just like there was no break there at all. Yeah, this is uh, Bob, uh, November 3, Kilo Delta, Charlie. I came in late, but where do you actually get this copper foil that has the adhesive? Oh, copper foil is easy to get. Right. Uh, it's, you get it from Amazon.com. <laughs> you just go, just go on Amazon, put in copper self-adhesive copper foil tape, and it'll come right up. But frankly, uh, uh, aluminum. You know, I, I, I always, I like to always ask this is a kind of a trick question. It's a good trick question, but since this is most of your club, you can't ask it on it. If I list the, if I list the following four metals tell me which is the most conductive copper gold silver aluminum put them in order most gold, conductive least conductive gold, silver copper aluminum no I I, no it's sil- silver copper gold aluminum and that's barely gold that's it aluminum. you know kevin's got it right Gold is not the most conductive of those four. It's less <laughs> conductive than copper. It's only slightly more conductive than aluminum. <laughs> yeah, good. Aluminum is about 66% of copper, and and gold is like 68%. So it's like nothing. And so copper is only about only about 4%. It's only like 98% of silver. So why bother to spend the extra money? Oh, yeah. Why bother to spend the extra money? I like aluminum. I like aluminum tape. It's cheap. We have a dollar store or 99 cent stores, it's called. And you can buy that aluminum tape there, two inch widths uh, for a dollar. You get a nice big long roll. Whereas the copper is not overly expensive, but it it is it is expensive. Aluminum is available at Home Depot and Lowe's. You don't, Whereas copper, you can't find it all in those places. No, it's used to tape up air conditioning ducts. So I, my recommendation is aluminum. But uh, the copper was copper was Ham's favorite building material. Remember this this whole ep- epoch started at my breakfast meeting when we decided what do we build the simplest antenna out of? Oh well, Hams have got to build it out of copper or PVC, or they aren't true Hams. My name's Mike Stucy at E4R. I call a ten meter net on Thursday nights here in the club. And this antenna looks like it might uh, apply to 10 meters really well. Easily. And help help some of our uh, location challenge members check into the net. What do you think about that? 
Oh, I, I think if you were to use that basic bird tenna that I showed you, that six foot tall, that six, six to eight foot tall bird antenna with a little birdhouse on top of it so you can hide it from your neighbors if you want to. Maybe if you don't have neighbors, you won't have to do that. But that would easily go down to 10 meters using one inch tape with one inch spacing quite easily. I hope my uh, my 10-meter net people uh, paid close attention. <laughs> if you build a 10-meter version of it, please send me some pictures and some results and what you built it with. Try that. Well, try that uh, concrete tube from Home Depot. <laughs> oh, that's that's great stuff. Would you like to see one of them? I'll show you a picture of one if I can find it. There it is. I didn't, it's it's not on any band. This is not a complete antenna. This is just a loading coil. And the idea is, and you can see it down here, here's a here's a bolt through the end of it. This is a, a four-foot tube with one-inch copper tape wound one inch apart on the on this 12-inch diameter. They come in a variety of diameters from 12, from about 10 up to about 15 inches. Uh, I just picked the 12-inch one there. And it made a wonderful loading coil. The idea is to hang it up in your attic. Uh, this this article, and then to attach wire to the end of it until you get it tuned to the to the fr- the band you want to put it on. Uh, I did some easy neck uh, I did some easy neck simulations on it, and you can easily take this one down to forty meters with a uh, with a couple of wires on the end of it that it will fit in most a- most attics. Uh, how do you feed it? Well, you just I fed it didn't shunt across two turns. I just c- took my I took my uh, trusty uh, PL259 uh, antenna analyzer. I now have a, uh, a rig, rig expert, A1400, that's better than the PL259. But uh, I, I just put a couple of, of needle probes on the end of it and, and went probing down this coil until I found 50 ohms and hooked the coax across it. Worked just fine. Great antenna. Uh, 